This is the Blue Ridge Parkway on a rather hazy day close to the Rockfish Gap and uh, behind me is the uh, Rockfish Valley in Nelson County in uh, central Virginia. The valley below me at uh, the moment today is very heavily wooded. Uh, during the Civil War it would have been full of uh, farms, plantations and um, slave owning families, many of them small slave owners but also a few larger plantations. Now during the uh, the Civil War and since then a whole mythology has built up around uh, the reasons for the Civil War mainly under segregation in the 1880s, 1890s through to the 1920s, 1930s when the whole of the South was trying to portray the Civil War as a war of northern aggression, as something in which uh, they were the rightful people, that it was nothing to do with slavery at all, that it was actually uh, to do very much with states' rights and uh, to do with the, uh, defending a way of life. But it was definitely about slavery. And at the time, prior to the Civil War, Virginia, of course, included West Virginia. Now, at the time of the Civil War, the majority of the white population of Virginia lived in the western counties. So the majority of the white population of Virginia rejected secession and rejected the whole arguments about um, uh, that the Confederacy were, were propagating. Another argument that they used was that slaves really didn't mind their slavery, that they were quite happy, that there was no resistance during uh, the Civil War, that in fact they were very peaceable and they went about doing their um, daily chores and that they weren't treated that badly, that uh, Virginia compared to the cotton states of the south was actually a much uh, better place to be a slave than, uh, than elsewhere. Well this is um, a poem that I'm going to read now from the Virginiad that um, really tries to nail what I call the great lie because slaves in fact did resist uh, they resisted throughout the Confederacy. In Virginia, wherever the, um, the Yankee soldiers came, the slaves would flock to them uh, in their thousands. All down through the Shenandoah Valley, which is just behind you, uh, as soon as the um, uh, Sheridan and uh, uh, other Union generals came down through here, thousands of slaves flo flocked to them. Also across on the coast, thousands of slaves flocked to the Union troops and they actually formed regiments and they fought in the Civil War. And there was a lot of passive resistance. I mean, it, you have to re remember it would have been very hard to have been an isolated uh, slave and to try and resist your, uh, your owner. The Great Lie. The first part of the Great Lie is to deny that slavery was savage, barbaric, instead bleating and placating with soft metaphor and subtle explication that so many owners were good and kind and most slaves redeemably well treated, never whipped, never maimed, never shipped to coffle lines, iron masks or necklaces of horns, but lofted with warm clothes, adorned quarters and a living comfortable and soft. The second part of the great lie is to deny the evil of the system comparing it to northern industry, wage labour, whining that New England factories had slaves engaged for sorry pay in conditions just as forced or worse, and to ignore the curse of servitude, of rapes and killings, broken families, branded hands and faces, clipped ears, and the right for us to choose our lives and our fears. The third part of the great lie is to imply that most enjoyed their bondage, paternal dwelt, indentured, childlike, unprepared, household servants cared for well, enjoying beds and meals and comfort, too simple or unstressed to venture into a savage killing world where their lack of skills and laziness would squeeze them into destitution, not fond plantation ease. The fourth part of the great lie is to deny that the war drawled with slavery at all, to quote Lincoln, extend excuses that states' rights, homestead protection were the true concerns for Davis's plantation dudes, and to ignore why so many poor refused to fight, fled, deserted, or were enthused by the Union side, half of white Virginia seceding from the enslaved creed of the state. The fifth part of the great lie is to deny slave wisdom, endeavor, and capacity, as competent as whites, as brave, hard-working, and as fit, 
or that they craved their freedom, desperate with each flighted hour, stating that most plantations snoozed unperturbed by ward dispute, loyalty and repute, trusted, free, a whitewash that bruises e'en today, unabashed in inequality. The sixth and final part of the great lie is to deny the existence of wartime slaves, their flight and engraved resistance, their willingness to ambush, burn barns and houses, poison, refuse to work, sabotage, go slow about, flow freedom into their own firm hands, fight for Union forces and to scout, despite the frenzy butchered slaughter of the Confederate assault on a race's quiet, nobled valour. Let us no more apologise nor lie. Let us no more glissade nor simplify. Let us no more squirm nor ignore. But let us straight and truthful say, with courage in our humbled hearts, that we were terribly, terribly wrong, and slip upon our bended knees to beg forgiveness for inhumanities, seek ways to give in recompense, build memorials to their memory, and take their peaceful offered hands in final joint identity. I do. I bow my head and beg forgiveness on behalf of all who have defended slavery and defend it still.